Hello and welcome to Halo RV, everybody. My name is Josh the RV Nerd. I'm wearing a Catalina shirt. Uh, looking at a Jayco with you today. This is the 29BH. Uh, comes in just a little bit over 7,200 pounds, and it absolutely falls into that more premium uh, kind of ultralight class, where I kind of call it like an ultralight plus, because there's definitely lighter trailers, like the J-Feather, little brother to this, the uh, say like a 27BHB. It'll save you some weight. It's not going to have all the ritz and the glitz that this one has right here. What is nice, though, are the similarities between them. Like, they're both going to be carpetless. They're both going to have a 2 plus 3 year warranty, but Whitehawk basically does everything Jayfeather does and then a notch above. In case you weren't really aware of how the Jayco pecking order worked. Uh, Jayco being a bird company, pecking order. Unintentional pun, but I'll take it. Um, the uh, delivery driver next to me over here is laughing at me right now. Tip your waitress, young lady. Um, they need those tips. So... What you're gonna see here is like, this has a vaulted roof. This has a true queen bed. There's an option for a king bed in here. Everything in this, like the refrigerator's a little bit bigger. Everything here is a J Feather plus one. And then if you really feel like you gotta take it a whole nother step further, there's the Eagle HT version of this floor plane, which we, you know, coincidentally also have links for. I tell you what I'll do. I'll leave you links in the video description. Take a look at this. Let me know what you think about this one, because they've done some good updates here. I love that they finally went to that cargo bunkhouse in the back. I really feel, my personal opinion, anytime a manufacturer buries bunks on the rear wall, I really feel they should find a way to put some kind of cargo door back there. It's just too useful not to do it. That's just this guy's opinion. What do you think of that? And then, take a look at those links that I'll leave you. Let me know what you think about those. Which one would you go with, and why? And I love this one. I've liked this floor plan since the day I first saw it because everybody and their brother who was making something like this, they they always had the kitchen and the uh, the entertainment flip-flopped. And I never liked that because if you wanted to go past uh, to get to the kitchen to get anything, you had to go straight past the people watching TV if someone was in here watching TV. And this floor plan feels very entertainment focused. Like if you're stuck in here on a rainy day, I could see you really spending some time in this one. Another area I could see this RV working out really well for some people is like, let's say uh, you don't have like full-time guests, but you might occasionally have, uh, you know, friend, family, grandkid or something like that. That's one of the areas I think this floor plan works really, really well. Because, uh, for the most part, the bunks don't feel like you really eat up a lot of floor space. They just happen to be here in this one. In the meantime, it's frankly, it's a really good couple's layout. And they make a version of this two ways. One, uh, you know, with the bunks, one without. Now, you saw that we've optioned this one with that theater seating right there. Jayco uh, has, I don't know if it's exclusivity necessarily. I think they actually own maybe the patent or something. On those little swing out, I call them cupception stands because there's a cup holder inside the cup holder that uh, on the little swivel stand that sticks out, basically. Not to mention the cool little remote control storage in there. Um, just nice little touch features. You can bust those out when you want to. Very handy, like if you just got like a little uh, tablet or something on your lap, you know? Now, uh, starting in the 21 season, all of these were completely carpetless, which is something I really, really like on them. Um, these do have floor ducted heating in some areas. Whitehawk has what I call a hybrid heat ducted system. They have some floor ducts. They have some cabinet ducts. And I just, looking at that, I just realized I accidentally left a couple drawers open as I was going through taking all my, uh, you know, kitchen pictures and whatnot. We'll get to see the, the kitchen in all its detail in a few minutes here. You may also notice this is a, uh, a vaulted ceiling. I don't use one of those wacky fisheye camera lenses. I get that it looks very cool and very impressive. I also think it looks very deceptive because it doesn't give you a fair view of what the RV actually looks like. So uh, maybe the views on these videos aren't as grand as some possibly could be, but you are getting a real look at this thing, how it's really going to look when you come visit our dealership. What, uh, well, I guess on that note, it is important to mention huh, the decor on the one that we have in stock could actually be different from what we're looking at here. This is the uh, modern farmhouse decor. Jayco doesn't shoehorn you into only this, though. What's interesting with the farmhouse decor versus the vintage decor is only the kitchen section changes. Everything else, uh, like the uh, the entertainment, the woodwork over there will always be the same. Now, just to give you a reference point, I'm actually sitting at the left-hand theater seat right now. Man, you're you're just directly on top of this thing. It is nice and easy viewing. You can, but it's angled so you can still see it from the dinette. We're close enough. I think we can all agree. This goes beyond the realm of a conventional electric space heating Tootsie toaster. That right there, 
is a little footsie fryer, man. Uh, you, you could get some KFC drumsticks going off these things. I got the nice uh, Adatus on display today. Um, when I sat down, my pant legs really hiked up right there, so I look like I got old man pants on. <laughs> Regardless. Um, you know what? We're, we're looking at all of this over here. We'll come back to the bunks. Let's take a look at uh, all of our kitchen storage. But weirdly, we're actually going to keep scrolling past a little bit to get over here. Because the dinette area over here is one of those where they've done a good job of incorporating the storage very intelligently and seamlessly. Now, I like those little accent lights. I want to point out that those are accent lights and not daylight shining through the slide out, as uh, somebody inquired about in one of our previous videos. Uh, no, that is that is not daylight, because the slide floor, you can see, actually goes out to here. It actually it blends so seamlessly with that carpetless thing. I could see how somebody could realistically make that mistake looking at a tiny little phone screen, maybe. Now, if you're looking in these uh, little dinette compartments, you might notice they don't go all the way back to the exterior slide wall. So what gives? Well, that entire rear bench is an exterior accessible storage chest. Now, you could, um, you know, access that from the inside. And Hang on. Is that table little Kitty Wampus? Is it me? No. It's Kitty Wampus. Ah, yeah, it's because I didn't get it all the way on there the way I'm supposed to. Okay, so that's uh, a nerd fail. I can tolerate that. My wife says I make mistakes all the time, and I don't argue with her, so I'm willing to bet that that's actually probably pretty darn accurate. Regardless. Now, they've changed this floor plan around a, a little bit. This and the 27RB, the no-bunk version of this. Like, if you love what you see in this video, like, man, I wish they made it without bunks. They do. They, they, they make almost this exact same thing without the bunks. From that pantry right there forward... They make the literal exact same thing without bunks. You've got the same pocket-screwed cabinetry, the same kitchen arrangement here with that sealed edge press membrane countertop. And, um, ladies and gentlemen, yay or nay on the pop-up power towers. What is your vote on that? I like them. I see they, they get a lot of, uh, they, they get a lot of hate mail, though, on our channel here. I would be curious to know if you love them, if you hate them. And why? I, I kind of, I, I like the feature, but I'm not the one buying this camper. Maybe the way I camp is just a little bit different. Now, speaking of the way I camp, I tend to park camp. So this larger 12-volt uh, DC compressor fridge, this is one of the, uh, the 10 plus cubic foot varieties right here. This is my personal preference. And one of the things I like about the way Jayco's done this is they've used uh, Furion for their 12-volt refrigerators, which means the face uh, wooden plates on the uh, refrigerator will always match the decor. So if you choose to get the vintage decor instead of the farmhouse that we're looking at here, the, the refrigerator is going to change color uh, accordingly, which I think is neat. And if you noticed, we're actually looking at, uh, we, we got the DP, yeah, you know me. This is a uh, double pantry model right here. Um, so you've got like a dedicated kitchen pantry. And then the first thing we looked at next to the dinette that I call the pantry, in a way, that could actually just be like, um, oh, what am I wanting to say? Like dresser storage for the bunk room. Now, sorry, I'm trying to weave my way behind all those drawers that I keep leaving open. But what's kind of nice about this, even though the door's in the way, you get to see that sliding privacy door there for the master bedroom. And that's one of the other things I like about the way they build that wall out a little bit there to give you some privacy. And speaking of that, Jayco also adds a very simple, very inexpensive, something you could DIY onto any trailer, but I like that Jayco does it. Little U-latch spot right here. So this sliding door, which normally has no way to lock, can be latched from the inside. So maybe you've got a migraine. Maybe you need it quiet. Um, maybe, um, you know, we are hugging and we don't want the littles in the room. I'm just throwing that out there. Apply that to your life as you need. That is actually, interestingly, a question that has been coming up uh, more and more recently this year. Um, uh, what, what are recommendations for finding uh, ways to occupy the children while enjoying uh, marital intimacy uh, within the RV? I, I tell you this, uh, I don't know, that I, like I touch uh, on a lot of really uh, sensitive topics sometimes and I have a lot of tongue-in-cheek phrases. I haven't figured out a way to broach that one appropriately, but I do know of a couple full-timers out there who have addressed things like that on their own channels. Uh, you, you might want to look at that. Like um, I've mentioned his name before, but Mr. Joshua Sheehan of Ganderflight. That's something that he talked about. He's actually got one of the funniest suggestions I've ever heard. So if that's uh, on your priority list, you might, I don't know, take a look at that. Now up front here, we have that windshield, but... 
where almost everybody else does a pleated shade, they actually do a blackout roller shade on the front of these because they have the uh, the the track basically built into that, which acts as like a you know a valence and a lambrequin to make sure that the light's not really bleeding through. You may also notice there's a funny little cutaway up by that little headboard right there. Take a look over at the right hand side of the screen right now. That is a neat little uh, just hidden pocket, but it's got household plugs back there. So if you want to use it, uh, you know, to maybe hide a little CPAP machine, phone chargers, anything like that, or even just a little book nook, you want to keep your wallet out of the way, something like that. I mean, I can think of a couple different ways that you could utilize that here. Now, let's talk storage in this bedroom. Over here, you see that both closets are, well, closets, wardrobes, but you can also use them as dressers. That is something that Jayco, uh, Jay Feather and Whitehawk both do very well. There's a lot of people who go, I don't need hanging storage. I need dresser space. And they've given us uh, a little bit more than that, too. We'll look at door number two in just a second. But first, I want to take a peek under this bed. Mostly because I want to make sure there were no monsters living under this bed. Uh, actually, while we're looking down here, uh, the, the way that there's that little kind of cutaway corner pocket right there sort of reminded me. This is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. So if your feet dangle off the edge of this, you know that guy who lives under your bed whose you know, teeth and fangs, they will, they will rip the flesh right off your feet if he gets a hold of them, but he can't penetrate the bed sheets. Well, it's a 60 by 80 true queen, so you don't got to worry about that. But there's also an option for a 70 by 80 king. Now, when I've asked for feedback on this, and I would love to hear from you, what do you think? I've had a lot of people say, always king bed, Josh. And I've had a lot of people say, nope, queen bed only. It's been 50-50. What I've noticed is on the personal custom build orders that we've had on Whitehawks, only one has opted for the king bed. And keep in mind, manufacturers and dealers, they don't set the market. They merely reflect the market. So, uh, you know, maybe in the future, if I start hearing more people or I see more people want to get the king beds in these, I'll incorporate a few of those. But to educate those out there, when you go with the king bed, it's one of the times where your side stands and your side closets will actually shrink down a little bit, about five inches uh, less on either side to make room for the 10 inch wider bed. And at a glance, you look at that and say, man, those get, uh, I lose 10 inches of vertical hanging storage or dresser space. That's a lot, man. Uh, the good news is I actually think the way that most White Hawks are done, you're not really going to feel lacking in storage. Because over here, hidden away behind the entertainment center, we have ourselves a, like, I, I don't want to call it a walk-in closet. It really looks like that until you come down here and you see it has a hefty dresser space. Uh, so if you go with the king bed, the storage feels wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. But then you look over here and it's hefty, hefty, hefty. And I would really appreciate it if the good people at the hefty garbage bag company would not sue me over that. Instead, let's just consider this some free product placement off of some idiot Midwestern guy's uh, YouTube channel. And my measuring tape just fell off of my belt loop. Hopefully, I don't forget that. Um, now, over here, uh, these are all roof solar ready. That right there is where a charge controller could be located. I'm going to splice in some footage uh, from another Whitehawk in a minute here where you can kind of get to see one of those. So stay tuned for that a little bit if you're a little bit curious. Why is that drawer? You know what the problem is? The RV is not level and uh, the drawer keeps sliding open because I didn't get it fully latched shut. That's why those drawers keep opening. Uh, so it's, uh, once again, a nerd fail. It's, it's user error. Oh, let's talk air conditioning. So, um... No longer do you have to choose between a 13,500 BTU Air and a 15,000. This is something also in common with the J Feathers. All J Feathers and all White Hawks, they only have one size air conditioner, but they're all a Furion 14.5. So they're basically all by default using bigger air conditioners. Now, uh, this is 50 amp. You can get this with a second AC uh, if you sacrifice the ceiling vent in the bedroom. So if you want to be breathing icicles in this thing, you live down south, uh, out west where it gets crazy hot, where you have 9 billion percent humidity that as a Midwestern boy, we just don't have to deal a lot with here. But I actually lived in America's Georgia for a little bit. I know what that billion jillion percent humidity is like. If, uh, I, I, I mean, if there was ever a sensation that properly uh, uh, conveyed the idea of what is soul crushing, the nine bajillion percent humidity that some of y'all get. 
That qualifies. That qualifies. I get it. And by the way, for my other Midwestern uh, friends and family, keep in mind, y'all is Y apostrophe A L L. It is not Y A apostrophe L L. Uh, you know, if you're going to use regional diction, make sure you're doing it correctly. <laughs> it's like I've got family down in Tennessee, and she called me uh, looking at a specific fifth wheel, and uh, my, my cousin goes, uh, I ask her where she's from. She goes, well, y'all Yankees, you're, you're going to call it Maryville, but it's Merville. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, hey, fair enough. Now, over here, they've done a few things I really like. First of all, that is a wide door. And as I keep gaining more weight, I keep needing a wider door myself. Over here, we have the J command system. Uh, what I like about this is like, you can go through here, you can go through the menus and you get your slides and awnings and you can check your room temperature and all that. It's got the little thermistors and everything. I like the fact though, there's just a switch for all the main cabin lights. This also talks to the TPMS system that's now standard on the tires. And you can always just get your phone and Bluetooth to that thing basically and, and get the free J command app and utilize it that way. Uh, you might have noticed one of my other favorite things over here, the open air ladder wall. It makes the whole RV look and feel bigger because there's a larger perception of space. But one of the things Jayco did really well here is they've done separate upper and lower bunk curtains so that each bed can have its own little individual privacy. Also with Whitehawk, something they do that's very cool. You see that little corner stand? There's household and USB outlets up there. Um, there's also household and USB outlets over there. Normally there'd be a corner stand in the bottom, but because of that cargo bunk door, they didn't really want to get in the way of everything. Now we will come back and look at this, uh, in cargo bunk mode. I want to take a little look in the, well, commode, uh, as it were, but first a standard feature up here. If you are boondocking, you want to get that great airflow going. Or if you're cooking like a storm and the, uh, the, the vent hood isn't keeping up, you have that XL vent fan right there, that multi-speed high exhaust fan, where you can make sure you can force a five mile an hour breeze through these frameless windows, which are a little bit notorious sometimes, by the way, for getting not awesome airflow. But what is nice is the slide side windows that you're looking at over here. They always have that good airflow. And uh, well, I suppose you also have privacy, and as long as we're talking about it, that dinette can also fold down into a, a heck of a good sleeper as well. As if the master queen or king bed, let me know which one you like, and the double over double bunks, which are 600 pound rated each, by the way. That's like a best in class thing. As if that wasn't enough, you could always sleep on the dinette. And there's a hide a bed option for this thing too. Which also begs the question, first of all, why is my face looking pasty white like that movie from the Powder? Remember that movie Powder? Anybody see that where the kid turns into lightning at the end? This is a real movie, by the way. I'm not just making this stuff up, I swear, guys. But, sorry, <laughs> squirrel. Um, the sofa, hide a bed, theater, what's your pick? And there are some really good bits of execution in here. Uh, that window is a tilt-open frameless window. Of course, it has a privacy shade, so you're not putting on a free show for the neighbors, unless you're into that kind of thing. I lack the confidence uh, uh, in myself, and my physicality to do that. More sealed edge countertop material all the way through. Huh. Instead of just a little wooden box down there where they're, they're hiding, I don't know if it's wiring or plumbing or something right there, they put another little sealed edge countertop material thing on that little... I would say footrest, but they angled the toilet properly where you can see even a big dude like me. It's not just long-legged space. It's wide, friendly space. Then you got this big shower over here, which from the factory, uh, at no additional charge, mind you, they were uh, happy enough to ship this thing with about a billion bugs in it. Oh, it makes my skin crawl looking at that. The good news, you won't have to look at that when you come take the RV home. At no additional charge to you, we do things like give the RV a bath on the inside now. And, and I know that sounds really stupid, but you realize that's not standard operating procedure for a lot of dealerships across the nation. Now that vaulted ceiling here, cause it's a six and a half foot sidewall, which normally means my head would have to be in the bubble. But notice how they put the shower head on the inside wall at the tallest point of the ceiling. So you don't have to duck in that sucker, even if you're 6'3 like me. Cause nobody likes ducking suckers. That sounds like the name of like a confection company. <laughs> Try Tasty Duck and Suckers, eight original flavors. We've got monkey berry, we've got marmalade. 
Sorry, I forgot what I was doing again. Let's close the slide before I do something else. Then we close that slide up. We look at her in road mode. And thankfully, because this one has the two doors, uh, you can pretty much get through the whole darn thing. Now, if you look over here, the refrigerator, the pantry, like the kitchen remains just very easily walk-in accessible. You don't have to do a lot of twist around, you know, RV gymnastics to be able to get through the RV. You don't have to go climbing over anything, or as I sometimes call it, the Dukes of Hazard, yee-haw, to get over that thing. Also, we talked about the cargo bunk function of this. I think road mode is absolutely the time to showcase that. And what I like about this is, you know, where that door is located, you have a pretty sizable, almost like running uh, runway landing pad up here. That could actually fit some things like you. You can load a kayak in there sideways. Um, you could potentially say like take the front tire off of bicycles, load bikes in with the handlebars, turn sideways. You could do a lot of things with that. What's also kind of neat is if they're like if if you walk in the door and you have a kayak loaded, the kayak could maybe prevent the door from opening, right? But remember, because you have the door off the back of this, you could slide the kayak backwards. You can always make uh, things a little bit longer uh, within the site, right? Like in a parking space, you just can't always make them wider. So you always maintain really good accessibility through things. And obviously, it's great for just a quick potty stop. Now, as we're coming up here to check on the uh, bedroom, you see Mr. Rick doing some quality control for us, getting up inside the compartments, making sure everything lights up properly, making sure there's not, you know, easily missed hidden damage or anything like that. And this second door is handy because, again, when the slide closes, it pretty much blocks us from getting off into everything. So if you need to make a little overnight kind of travel stop or if the RV's just in storage and you need to get in here to pack, you can do that too. And, you know, another thought occurred to me. If you just really need a break from the kids, you could always come up here in the bedroom, deadbolt the door, and use a remote system to close the slide behind you to really guarantee privacy. <laughs> and you know, it's a dreary, overcast day. I've been dodging raindrops. I've been getting spritzed in the face off and on. I'm actually sitting here juggling the camera basically under my little umbrella hat that a couple of you might have seen. And still you can't bring me down on this thing. These 22s look so so good you know structurally they haven't really changed but cosmetically man it looks very sharp very attractive to me looks like it's 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 in attack mode even when it's just sitting there a neat thing they do on these too and again this is one of those plus one features you're gonna find here not every campsite has a picnic table and frankly with some of the pictures that i've seen of people cleaning their sewer hoses out on a public picnic table i don't I, I, i'm probably never gonna camp again without bringing my own picnic table I love that Jayco includes a little two foot by four foot table right here. That's something Freedom Express from Coachman has also been doing for a number of years. But notice, it doesn't interfere with any of our storage down here. You still have a nice pass through compartment. You've got some handy outlets out here in case you want to pl plug in the kids bubble machine. But uh, they, they really put an aggressive seal package around this door too. Plus we've got the bag that hold backs and slam latches. But a little courtesy tip, if it's late at night, carefully, quietly close it. Don't blam that thing because the neighbors do not appreciate that. Take a look at that marker light. There's a funky monkey black job sticking off the side of it. That's a technical term. That is a side camera prep point so that if you want to put a full observation suite on this baby, she is ready to rock and roll. We've got the uh, sleek, frameless, tinted windows going on here. Great patio awning space. It really does, the patio awning does favor the rear door, but that's because it's a huge awning area right there. But as we uh, cruise our way down past the TV hookups oh, over there on the right side of the screen, we see the wide stance stability axle system with our Goodyear Endurance radials. Uh, also, TPMS, now standard on these. That is a very cool thing. That is actually a built-in part of the J command, uh, which is that little smart system that we looked at on the inside. So as you're going down the road, the camper can tell you if you've got a little inflation worry uh, happening right there. I don't know if you've ever, I've had that experience once. I was going down the road, low pressure light kicked out of my car. I, uh, I hit the little alert button to look down to see what it was, and I was watching my right rear tire deflate in real time. It was like 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, and I was like, oh my God. And I was able to get slowed down and on the side of the highway to get that tire changed before I had a blowout, before I had a massive flat, before I lost control of my vehicle. 
I'm a big fan of TPMS because I've personally been in an experience where I think it actually made the difference in my family's safety. That's why I like them. Now, uh, the, this RV comes standard uh, with a, uh, a Blackstone griddle that will actually mount down here in the J port. There's a big long extension arm because the Blackstones burn so hot they don't want it right up beside the trailer and it will come out to like about here. So why am I doing hand puppets instead of showing you something? Because unfortunately, at the time of this filming, about nine bajillion Blackstone griddles are locked in a container ship somewhere off the coast of the United States, not able to get into the country. So you're going to receive a voucher where you actually get that Blackstone once it becomes available. Here's the thing, though. That J-Port, it's a two-inch receiver. It works for, like, any uh, accessories. You can always use the propane cooker hooker down below there. You can always uh, make it a grilling station or a griddle station or whatever you want. But frankly, there's chairs, there's tables, there's hammocks that you can hook off the side of this thing. That'd be a sweet little napping spot. You wouldn't even have to get up to get a drink. You could just reach above your head. Oh, that'd be cool. And uh, do you have some neighbors that you wish weren't there so that you had a little more space on your campsite? Well, here's a little pro tip from your Uncle Josh. Use this at your own risk, mind you. There's also a high-class device known as a bumper dumper that you could use off the side of this thing and it has been my experience that should you choose to utilize the bumper dumper at the campsite of your choice your neighbors uh tend to vacate rather quickly <laughs> well what's nice is you could always just tuck all that away you just pop it open when you need to uh on the back here though Again, the addition of that cargo bunk door, something this floor plan did not always historically have. A lot of people asked for it. They said, man, as long as that bunk is back there on the wall, if nothing's in the way, I wish they opened that up. And it's maybe not as wide as some I've seen because on the right-hand side, you do have the camp kitchen in the way. And no, there is not an option to get rid of it. It's just how this floor plan is made. It could always be removed after the fact though. Um, you know, it's, it's as wide as it could be, I suppose. But I love how Jayco has included in that heavy-duty plywood flooring those little tie-down D-rings there. And in case you're curious about security, that has the same deadbolt as our main entry door, which is right next to the bunks anyway. So I don't think that uh, that design is any sort of additional security concern. You just deadbolt the door and you're going to be good to go. Now, uh, like all Jayco uh, towable RVs, this has the J-Smart lighting system. Uh, I think it, I always say it stands for signals, markers, and reverse travel, but I think it technically stands for something else. But long story short, if you flip on, say, that left-hand turn signal, the uh, left-hand clearance marker lights along the entire trailer will also blink with that signal to give you a better idea of what you're doing. And the white element in the center of that light is actually a reverse travel light. The uh, hookups are nice and high off the ground on this one because it's on a little bit bigger chassis. Black tank flush, outside utility shower with hot and cold right above this guy right here. And since like all of the uh, uh, like holding tanks and everything, they're, they're back here uh, in this area, you do have one centralized consolidated dump point, which is kind of cool. But remember that U dinette? Remember how I said you don't have to tear apart the dinette to get to all the storage? That's what we're talking about right here. And I mean, it's, you know, it's just an empty space. It's just general storage. But the fact is, you don't have to tear apart the dinette to get to that every time you want. What would you put in there? Like a little, a little, you know, traveling golf club just to kind of play with your swing a little bit. A, uh, a fishing pole, maybe. Ooh, you know what? Uh, bag chairs or maybe uh, an outdoor rug might fit into that very nicely. All the windows very heavily tinted to keep the sunshine and the nosy neighbor's uh, nose out of your business. She's slide awning ready. She can do the... Well, it is an electric slide. You can do the electric slide. I really should have thought about that before I let it roll out of my mouth. But thinking before I speak is not exactly my strongest uh, quality. <laughs> now you look over here, you see she's side solar prep for portable panels. You'll also see this is roof solar ready. But real quick, one of the things I want to do is talk about the weather package on these White Hawks. Because you look at it and a ton of things look like this. You're like, okay, yep, it's got that enclosed belly. What else you got, partner? Well, after some pretty comprehensive testing, what Jayco found out coming into the 2021 season is that Whitehawks were actually zero to 100 degree capable or what people often refer to as four seasons. I dislike that phrase because I think it sets not good expectations. There are still limitations to this, but just like Eagle, North Point, Pinnacle, this is hot, cold camp, tested, rated, proven. 
Plus, you've got the industry's best two plus three year warranty that I don't know of anybody else in this classification of trailer matching. You got the Goodyear tire package for peace of mind. You've got potentially best in class safety features with the Goodyear's, the, the TPMS, the turn signal lighting, the camera prep if you want to get all into that. And it's got something else almost nobody else also has, a plywood roof we can trounce all over. I mean, you know, with 15 acres of RVs, I've been on a couple different roofs before. Jayco's, one of the big selling points on these, one of the big attraction points, I think, is that they have one of the heaviest roof load ratings available out there. And the plywood decking on here is something that can hold more weight than common OSB decking, which is still perfectly walkable. It's just the difference between good and better, you know? Like the, the power vent fan here in the, uh, the living room area. See those little ears that stick up? If you want to add one of those like roof vent cover jobs to it, you can do so without actually screwing into the construction. You don't have to actually uh, modify any RV construction, so you're not screwing up your warranty. Again, up here we've got that 14,500 BTU uh, Furion air conditioner. I do like the look of those. They have a very smexy look. I like that they're white on top too, so the air conditioner isn't like broiling from the sun and already fighting against everything to keep up. I actually, I really like the fact that Jayco uses all white fixtures up here with the exception of the roof solar prep plug, because as far as I know, those don't come in, in any color except black. Now, um, when we were inside the RV, I actually spliced in a bit of footage I forgot to use on my 27 RB White Hawk Tour, uh, which uh, we actually had an example of one of these White Hawks with the factory solar package on it. You got to see the charge controller over my shoulder. That goes right down into the bedroom to the charge controller. You can get a couple panels put up here. It's a 30 amp controller. So if you really want to build yourself a fairly robust package, you can. And as a cool little added benefit and something that is painfully undocumented, even by Jayco, every single Jayco laminated trailer or fifth wheel uh, is prepped for an inverter. It's again, it's something they've actually been doing for like over a year. It just has not been very well documented. Now, I do apologize if the camera audio has been a little wonky since we stepped outside. I don't know if you're really seeing it, but it is, uh, it, it's it's awful darn windy today. I was hoping my hat would flap in the breeze and right then the wind died down. So I look like I'm an idiot just staring at my hat because of course that's what happens. Thank you, mother nature. You know, as if I'd, I'd, I, I make myself look stupid enough. I don't need, I don't need any help from the universe to look like more of an idiot. So once again, I've mentioned a few times, there's a couple other very similar things out there, a couple other similar things within the Jayco family, let alone other people. Again, I'll leave you some links in the description. Uh, if you just like the layout, but you're like, eh, I'm on a little more of a, more of a beer budget, I just have champagne taste, I got some really good stick and tin options uh, for a floor plan like this for you. We've got all kinds of different things that we can check out here at Halid RV. It's one of the nice benefits that we have of having so many different brands all wrapped up into one place to help you find the one or two little nuances that work best for you. So if you appreciate the fair way that we take a look at things here, pointing out the good, the bad, with the ugly, with everything in between, showing you, you know, some of the high points and some of the low points along the way too. If you haven't done so, subscribe to our videos here, and at the very least, hit that like button, even if you don't have any sort of comments to add. It doesn't cost you anything, but it actually does help spread the message on these videos a little bit. And as a family owned and operated standalone independent store, we'd sure love the opportunity to, to get that message spread out and to get our family name out there. And remember, um, you can buy them from us. That's okay, too. <laughs> so when you're ready, we're ready. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go dry off.